I'm running out of gas. My right hand's in the zone. Somebody better get here in a hurry. You're not gonna make it. No, don't dive for the runway. Bring the power back. Okay, you're too high. Go around. Power up, power up, power up, power up. Helen Collins is 80 years old. Her husband had a heart attack and died when they were only a few minutes from landing. And although she managed to get the aircraft under control, she has no idea how to land and she's about to run out of fuel. Ironically, her husband had convinced her to take some flying lessons to learn how to land, but that was 30 years ago and she never got her pilot's license and has very little experience behind the controls as you're about to see. She's got the airplane under control, but the problem is there are two radios. One of them is tuned to Green Bay Approach Control, and the other is set to Sturgeon Bay Tower. Now, she's lucky that the radios are set up this way, because likely for most of the flight, one radio would have been set up to talk to the controlling agency, and the other would be tuned to monitor guard, which is an emergency frequency. However, because they're only about 10 minutes from landing, her husband had already switched the second radio over to the Sturgeon Bay Tower. This is going to help her, but it's also gonna be a big problem for her because now she's got two sets of voices trying to tell her what to do, and it's gonna cause some confusion. Okay, very good. I'm the uh, pilot at Sturgeon Bay Airport, and uh, I, I uh, hear the aircraft just fly over. Uh, Helen, if you could continue to circle right around the airport as you see it, uh, we'll coordinate what we're going to, the approach we're going to make here, okay? Okay, will do. Can you tell me how much fuel you have, the fuel gauges? Can you locate the fuel gauges and tell me how much fuel you have? Half, half tanks, full tanks, or... F um, I'm not sure. We just came from Rome, Georgia, so they're not, um, they're not real full. They're down, the first, the left tank is a little over the one mark, and the right tank is a little under the one mark. This is a great question because they know the plane is at the end of a long flight, so they need to know how much fuel she has because right now it's really a race against time. Can they figure out how to help her land before she runs out of fuel? Okay, Helen, um, we're going to launch another aircraft. It'll come up and it'll fly right next to you and give you instructions and we'll fly right with you all the way down to the airport. There'll also be somebody on the ground watching you. Over. Okay, I got it. Okay, just continue to circle the airport. We'll be up there in about 10 minutes. So just uh, keep the power setting to where, where it is. Keep the configuration of the airplane the same. Just keep circling around the airport at the altitude and the airspeed that you're at. My airspeed is about 170 right now. I'm not sure if this plane has an autopilot, but either way, she's hand flying the aircraft right now, and she's doing a really great job of maintaining her altitude and her airspeed, and really just circling around the airport. Now, in most situations, when you hear about a passenger flying, they end up getting a lot of help over the radio, and there's never any discussion of another plane joining up with them. And this is a really great idea, but if the plane isn't already airborne, then it's definitely going to take longer than 10 minutes, so there might not be enough time. Hi, Helen. This is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. It's a hell of a place to be. Okay, Kathy, we're My hubby is the guy that's going to go airborne and just kind of talk you down. All right, I got it. And just a couple things to remember. And I'm just going to talk to you about this while they get the airplane ready and launch. Uh, with the throttle, what is the throttle set at RPM-wise right now? I'm going 160. Okay, you're doing 160, okay. And uh, where is the throttle set? What's the RPM? Um, I'm looking at the RPM. It's about 23 inches. Okay, and that, that RPM goes with the top levers. Are you familiar with the top levers? No, I am not. Now, the throttles, are you familiar with the throttles? 
Not on the, not on this air, aircraft, no. This is the twin engine aircraft. Did you know that roughly one out of three Americans believe they can land a plane in an emergency despite having no flying experience? And apparently if they watch a YouTube video, they feel more confident in their ability. But the reality is much different. Airplanes are complex. You can see that there's all kinds of instruments to pay attention to that provide critical information. And even something that might sound simple like prop levers or throttles can actually be pretty complicated if you're not a pilot. Where did you say the fuel indicator was? The, the right one is just a little under half between, uh, up to the left, and the left one is on one. Okay, so it's just under a half, you said? Uh, not half full. It, it's close to, it's close to nothing. Oh, okay, it's close to a quarter tank. Okay, are you over the airport right now? No, I'm headed uh, south right now. I'm about even with Algoma. Okay, now I would start heading. I would start heading north uh, back to Sturgeon Bay Airport. All right, I trimmed out a lot of the audio here because what's happening is there's a lot of confusion over where she's supposed to go. She's got the people at Sturgeon Bay trying to get her to go there, and they're already working on getting a pilot airborne that can escort her and help out. But Green Bay Approach Control is also trying to get her to go down there. Now, the problem with going down to Green Bay is that, first of all, it's about 40 miles away. And without a good sense of navigation or familiar visual landmarks, it might be very tough for Helen to find the airport, even if she gets some radar vectors. That's why she decides to stick with Sturgeon Bay, because that's what she's most familiar with. And honestly, I think it's the better choice based on her current position and her state of fuel. I'm trying to slow it down. I think I lost, I lost the airport right now. Can I put my gear down yet? I lost the airport. Helen, it's a black runway. Just fly along the shoreline if uh, you lost the airport. And uh, you'll see the big, long, black north-south runway. And what comes up is the hangars. The hangars with the shiny roofs you'll see. I know it when I see it, but right now with everything going on, I'm at 1,500 feet. Now we have a new problem because Helen got distracted while she was trying to deal with Green Bay on the radio and she let the airport fall out of her cross check. Because she's only at 1,500 feet, it's easy to lose sight of the airport if you get too far away. Thankfully, she's familiar with the area, but at least she gets a great suggestion to just fly north along the coast because she should be able to see the bay and the bridges and at least reorient herself to where the airport is. I, what I'm going to have you do is just kind of circle over the airport. Once you see the airport, we'll I see it now. Over the airport. I see it now. Okay, you see it now. Is the other airplane in the air? Yes. Uh, he's not in the air yet. He's on the ramp. He's just starting up. You know, I'm not, my, I think I would have run out of fuel on my right tank. Somebody better get here in a hurry. Okay, okay Helen. Put the gear down. I actually don't think that putting the gear down right now is a good idea. I think that maybe she's telling her to do that because she's thinking that she's going to run out of fuel before the other pilot can get airborne, and Helen's just going to have to try and land on her own. However, even with a quarter of a tank, she's still got some time, and if she puts the gear down now, that's only going to increase her drag, and that's going to make her burn through the fuel much faster. Helen, did you find the gear lower? I found it, but I can't get it down. Oh, there it is. Okay, pull it out and push down. Do you have the gear down with three green? That is correct. Very good. You're looking good, Helen. Just fly down the runway and continue to the north. Circle around and do the exact same thing you just did, and I'll be up to catch you on the next downwind. I don't think I can circle again. Okay, do you have the landing gear down, Helen? Yes, I do. I'm coming in too fast. Oh, 
Perfect. And go back up. I'm going to be airborne in five minutes. That's it. Just sit, not, not, not a big pitch, just a little pitch. That's it. Just circle right around. Leave the gear down. Leave the gear down. Okay, I think a little bit of panic started to set in, which is completely understandable. She's getting low on gas, she's circling the airport, and even though he said he was going to be airborne in 10 minutes, it's been about 15 minutes, and even though that's still pretty quick, those 15 minutes have probably felt like 30 to 45 minutes to Helen. So it seems like she was about to try and land on her own and realize she was going too fast and thankfully recovered. Now he gets airborne in a second and they spend about 15 minutes going through some basic flight instruction and configuring the aircraft with the gear down and the appropriate amount of flaps. But she's almost out of gas, so she has to try to land and let's see how that goes. As soon as I join you up on the right hand side of the aircraft, you'll be looking into the sun, so do not, do not look at me. You just keep flying the airplane, okay? Okay, gotcha. Okay, very good. I'm going to stay right here at this position all the way around the pattern until we come in and, and to land, okay? You better get me in it pretty soon. I don't know how long I want to have gas. Yeah, we're doing good. We're, just, we're, we're coming around now. We're going to make a one big pattern, and I'm going to be right on your wing all the way in. So I'll be able to tell you if you've got to go up or got to go down. Now, it's real important to just be real light on the control. And the whole idea is make sure that nose is trimmed up. Get right in line with the runway. Put the runway right between your legs. Put the runway right between your legs. But don't bang. Don't bang. Just use rudders. Get the rudder. Get, get the runway right down between your legs. That's it. Are you, are you still pulling back on the controls? A little bit. Okay, you can trim it off if you want a little bit. Okay, you're looking good. Stay right on the middle of the runway. He keeps talking about the trim, and this is something that he talked to her about earlier, but if you're not familiar, as the aircraft slows down, it's going to require more back pressure on the yoke to keep the wings level. Now you can adjust the trim on the aircraft based on your speed, so that way there's little to no pressure required from you on the controls. So as she slows down, she needs to increase the nose up trim, otherwise if she just lets go of the yoke, the plane is going to pitch nose down and accelerate to whatever speed the trim is set for. Let's see how this landing attempt goes. Stay right down the middle of the runway. Okay, bring the power back a little bit. Bring the power back. Okay, you're too high. Go around. Power up, power up, power up, power up, power up. Just, just a little. No, no, don't pull back. Push. No, power up. Keep your wings low. That's it. Pull, full power. Full power. Full power. Go up. Up, up, up. Pull, 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 pull. Pull up a little bit. Pull up. Helen, pull up. Just, okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I can only imagine how intense that was for both of them. He's doing his best and he knows that her life is in his hands. Now she was too far right of the runway on that approach and it just wasn't looking that good. So the safest thing to do was to go around. Now too many pilots have crashed because they tried to force a landing from a bad approach. And I'm sure she really wanted to land, especially being low on fuel, but she did a great job of following the directions and going around. Now let's see if she can land before she loses an engine. Okay, you're doing good. That was a couple of good practice sessions. Now we should be good on this one. I hope so. I'm running out of gas. No, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Bring it around. No, my, my left hand, my right hand to the south. Okay, your right hand, your down. Just take it to the left hand. You keep coming all the way around. That's it. You're doing fine. Bring that left engine power lever all the way up. Okay, she's been circling the airport for over an hour and she just lost the right engine, but she's extremely lucky because a lot of twin engine planes can be very difficult to control or they might spin if you don't know what you're doing when you lose an engine. Thankfully, the type of Cessna that she's in isn't one of those planes. Now let's see if she can manage to land with just one engine. Okay, the runway is at about 10 o'clock. Keep it turning, keep it turning. Keep coming around to the left. Turn left, turn left, turn left, left turn, left turn. Turn left. She's having a hard time turning left because the right engine is dead. So all the power is coming from the left side and that's pushing her to the right. Hopefully she can get it under control. Helen, turn left, bring the nose up. That's it, that's it. Come around to the left. All right, not that much. Bring it, bang it to the right a little bit. Bank it right. Turn right. That's it. Okay, now turn right a little bit. Keep the nose up. Looking good. All right, you're, you're going to come right in line with the runway. Roll wings level a little bit. Roll wings level. Nose up. Nose up a little bit. There you go. I don't see the airplane. 
Thankfully she landed safely and if you want to see another video where the passenger had to fly the plane then check out this video on the screen here and I'll see you next time on Pilot Debrief.